In spite of the lawsuit the SEC has filed against Ripple, growth for the company has increased by over 90% year over year. I'm going to explain why Ripple is expanding so rapidly outside of the US in this video, as well as how much XRP is being utilized and what Ripple is doing by purchasing XRP from secondary markets. It's fascinating to see XRP sales for literally hundreds of millions of dollars taking place. And I'll tell you who is selling and why because Ripple is experiencing tremendous development outside of the US in large part. Elon Musk is engaged in some high-level litigation when he's not busy populating the planet, and he's also involved in yet not one but two more lawsuits that I'm going to discuss in this video. Additionally, there have been a few transactions reported by Whalewatch that claim Ethereum whales are buying millions of dollars worth of this old coin. In this video, I'm going to explain what coins they are buying, how much of it they are actually buying, and why I'm telling you this hello everyone, and welcome back to the XRP Vault. My name is Randy. The Ripple vs SEC lawsuit is currently being covered on this channel, but I also cover cryptocurrency news, investing markets, and personal finance. So make sure to click the subscribe button and sign up for the Linux community if any or all of these subjects interest you. Don't forget to click the notification bell icon. In this manner, YouTube will notify you when I upload a new video. Also, if you could click the thumbs up button and watch the entire video, that would be very appreciated. Of course, you may also visit my Patreon. The following description contains a link. I would be really grateful if you could do that. Okay, folks, let's get started. Okay, let's start by discussing some Ethereum whales and the products they are purchasing. Ethereum whales are reportedly purchasing Matic for $2.5 million, according to Whale Watch, which was just posted on Twitter. However, they are not the only ones, the Matic ecosystem has been growing rapidly lately. In fact, I said a month ago that Polygon is expected to experience significant increase if you are a patron of mine on Patreon. When Matic was worth around 52 cents, I posted that alert. It is currently more than 90 cents. And I believe there is still potential for gains. And it appears that several Ethereum whales share this belief since they are currently purchasing millions and millions of Matic now that it has been on a tear for nearly a month. In terms of overall Bitcoin trade volume during the last several weeks, it ranks roughly 6th. Thus, it is undoubtedly one to watch. Also, please check out my Patreon page if you haven't already. The following description includes a link. You'll want to keep an eye on some new stuff that will be released this week as well. Elon Musk is no new to litigation, but right now he's embroiled in two more, including the major one against Twitter. If you're not too acquainted with the Twitter saga, Elon Musk effectively sought to purchase Twitter first. Twitter first said, no, we don't want your offer. But afterwards they changed their minds and replied, okay, we'll take you up on it. Elon Musk then said, okay, that's fine. But I'm interested in how many Twitter bots and phony accounts there are. Twitter said, don't worry about it. No, Elon then stated that he was not buying it. Twitter said, no, you have to, you made your offer. We are suing you. Elon Musk has since filed a countersuit. He filed a counter complaint against Twitter only yesterday. However, no one is aware of what it says because they filed it under secrecy after he launched it. The judge did, however, state that he must resubmit it publicly, but with plainly visible redactions and important material blacked out. You won't be able to see it, then. However, that information must be made available to the public. They did this in front of the court while announcing that the trial would last five days and take place in October. Elon Musk's trial, which was supposed to last two weeks, will barely last five days. The judge only granted him that. In addition, he is a defendant in another action since someone else has brought one against him. In fact, a Twitter shareholder who owns around 5,500 shares of the company is suing Elon Musk for all the harm that was done by the litigation and the back and forth bullshit that effectively caused the price of Twitter to fall. So I'm not sure if that will result in anything. That's really just to put pressure on Elon Musk to complete the transaction, and Twitter is actually doing that very thing. So it will be fascinating to find out why Elon Musk is filing his countersuit. 
My assumption is that he's going to be involved with all the bot accounts, false accounts, and hidden agendas, as well as his basic due diligence, since Twitter hasn't given him access to any of that information. So, based on my best assessment, he has a case, and this may persuade Twitter to actually provide some of those papers. Now, if you've been watching this channel, you know that we discuss a lot of these topics in relation to the case between Ripple and the SEC. The SEC is battling tenaciously to keep many things hidden because they don't want them revealed. In this Twitter transaction, hopefully. However, my guess is that this is exactly what these lawsuit cases are about. Twitter is not the one that continues to withhold information about what they don't want uncovered, such as how many fake accounts they have, how many bot accounts they have with some of their algorithms, how some of their algorithms work, and things like that. Therefore, it appears like we will at the very least enter October before anything may be resolved. Okay, so let's talk about how the use of Ripple's on-demand liquidity system is expanding at a rate of over 900% annually, with the exception of the United States, of course, where the US SEC claims that Ripple is simply selling illegal securities. This is true even though the US SEC permits Ripple to sell some of these illegal securities in order to fund their own defense against the SEC, but you get the idea. So, Ripple recently released some of its quarterly stats, and they are enormous. They released their 2022 second quarter, or Q2, of this year. And their on-demand liquidity mechanism has grown 9x year over year. They further claim that new partners were joining the Ripple network every week, and that these partners were utilizing the system to conduct cross-border transactions. However, they did note that there are some significant growth categories and remittances that they hadn't previously examined. First, treasury flows are beginning to rise, and second, bulk payments are also beginning to rise. Therefore, other exchanges than the one-to-one -one and cross-border ones are beginning to catch up. Thus, this is essentially what led to large XRP sales for Ripple in the second quarter. In fact, they claimed that due of the on-demand liquidity mechanism, their partners had bought XRP worth more than $2.1 billion. Naturally, in order to do business, Ripple also acquired more XRP worth $1.7 billion from secondary markets, enabling its users to spend it in the on-demand liquidity system or purchase from them. Following that, Ripple stated that they will keep purchasing XRP from secondary markets since the use of the on-demand liquidity mechanism was expanding at a 9x rate year over year, which was remarkable and, in my opinion, would continue to do so. Imagine the on-demand liquidity system expanding after XRP has regulatory clarification in the US. If Ripple wins the lawsuit, XRP will acquire regulatory certainty in US institutions and banks will start utilizing the on-demand liquidity system. Right now. Simply put, they aren't permitted to discuss it. It's really unfortunate. Wait until XRP receives its United States clarity, though, if you believe 9x is significant. In the following year, you're probably looking at a use increase of 30x from the previous year. And after that, you mention how all of the XRP was bought on secondary markets. So that they can be used by those using the on-demand liquidity scheme. That is going to increase demand, raise the price and value of XRP, and of course, reduce its supply on secondary markets. Just like what happened to the price of Bitcoin when there was a shortage, XRP will see an increase in price as a result. If you haven't seen my last film, I discussed some of the history that was made in Ripple. In order to see a particularly unusual use case of the land register that is now on the XRP ledger, watch the movie if you haven't already. This project post is pretty fascinating. The other day, I posted a video where I talked about China's banks and the current mortgage issue that appears to be spreading throughout China. So feel free to pursue it if it interests you. Here is a link to that video. One of the most intriguing tales that is now circulating is not discussed in China because they are attempting to restrict that media, but it is discussed on websites like YouTube. Therefore, if you want to examine what the Chinese mortgage problem is truly doing and how much debt, in trillions of dollars, is uncollateralized you might want to continue reading this narrative since it is so intriguing. If you aren't new to this channel, I would also really appreciate it if you went to the community tab. I pull that up once a week, sometimes even every day, 
and I'd love to hear your thoughts on all these topics, all the stories I cover on the channel, as well as some of the larger markets in general. And as I have already indicated, I will be adding additional stuff to my Patreon in the upcoming week. As I mentioned, my first image from last month, Polygon Matic, has almost nearly doubled since I put it out on Patreon, thus, if that interests you in the slightest, please go to my Twitter account and follow me there. There is also a link in the description below. Okay, people, I really appreciate you sticking with it to the very end and clicking the thumbs up button. I'll see you all in the upcoming video, as usual.